Well, what we haven't done yet is we haven't yet proved that this process we defined in terms of its infinitesimal increments is actually a Poisson process. So that's what we're going to do here. Note that it, it's obvious that it starts from zero, and uh, the third point of the definition that the, that the increments are independent is also clear. So we've just got to check that the independent uh, that the increments of the process have the Poisson distribution, and that's what we're going to do here. Since the increments are stationary, are time homogeneous, what we want to show is that we want to show that x at time t is Poisson lambda t. If we can do that, we're done. So what it will be convenient to do, it will be convenient to write pjt equals the probability that xt equals j. And if we can prove that, that is a e to the minus lambda t, lambda t to the j over j factorial, then we'll be home and dry. So that's what we'd like to be able to do. So what can we say about pjt? Well, throughout this section we've been looking at small time increments. So in fact, let's think about what we can show about pjt plus tau for some very small time period tau. So this is saying what's the probability we're at j at time t plus tau. Now we can get to j at times t plus tau in a few different ways. One way is that we could already have been at j at time t, and then we didn't move. So we could have not moved with probability 1 minus uh, lambda tau plus O tau. You'll remember that for the probability of not moving. So if we were already at j at time t, that would be that. On the other hand, we might have been at j minus 1 at time t, but then seen an arrival in the little period of time. So remember that the probability of seeing an arrival in a little period of time tau is lambda tau plus perhaps some lower order terms. And so if we'd been at j minus 1, that's the chance we'd have seen one arrival, and that would have taken us up to j. Or we could have been at j minus 2, or j minus 3, or j minus 4, or j minus 5. But all those things have very small probability. So they're all little o of tau. OK, uh, we can do two things to rearrange here. One is that all the little o of taus can go in the same little o of tau. So the little o of tau, the little o of tau, and the little o of tau, we can move all those together. Now, the other thing is, I'm going to want to take one of these PJTs over to the left-hand side so I can get something that looks like an increment. Let me show you what I mean. If I take that green pjt over to the left, and on the left I have pjt plus tau minus pjt equals, and then what do I have on the right? I have a lambda tau pjt minus lambda tau pjt, in fact. I have a plus lambda tau pj minus 1t, and then I'll have all the little o of tau stuff. And remembering that little o of tau just means lower order stuff, I can just collect that into one little o of tau. All the things that had little o of tau, including anything that they were multiplied by, if that was a constant, that was a fine, fine we can just shove all that all into the little o of tau. So on the left, I've got you know, some sort of difference here, the difference between what happened at time t and what happened at t plus tau, I've got some expression on it for it on the right. Now, what can I do here? Really, I'd like to get rid of that awkward little o of tau. So how can I get rid of a little o of tau? I have to remember the definition. The definition was it tends to zero, as tau goes to zero, even if you divide through by tau. So it seems like the technique here is going to be divide through by tau, then send tau to zero. It's like the only choice we have going for us here, really, is to divide through by tau and send tau to zero. So let's do that. If we divide through by tau, this half, that becomes that over tau. 
On the right, uh, we can just cancel off a tau from that term. And uh, we can just cancel off a tau from that term. And then we have little o of tau over tau. And then send tau to zero. Again, the only thing we can do. So let's first think about what happens to the right-hand side. This first term here doesn't have any dependence on tau, so that's going to stay as it is. The second term here doesn't have any dependence on tau, although I missed that in brackets earlier. It doesn't have any dependence on tau, so that can stay as it is. This term, little o of tau over tau, as tau tends to zero, we said that the whole definition of the little o notation was that that tends to zero. So this term here tends to zero and goes away. What about the left-hand side? We've got pj of t plus tau minus pj of t, uh, just in case my handwriting wasn't clear there, pj of t, divided by tau and sending tau to zero. We should recognise that, right? That's the definition of the derivative, right? We've taken a small change in that function pj, divide by the size of the change and send that size to zero. So that's... Uh, pj prime of t, or if you prefer, it's dpj by dt of t. So on the left-hand side, we've got a derivative, and on the right-hand side, we've got some expression. Uh, let us note, uh, for the sake, sake of further use, uh, that uh, pj0 uh, equals 0, because we start from 0, not from j. I should have perhaps said at the start that this is all j greater than or equal to 1. And so we don't start at j, we start at 0. So what we've got there is a differential equation for pj in terms of itself. Uh, I said that we should treat the case j, j equals 0 separately, didn't I? But we can do that a bit quicker. For j equals 0... Uh, the only way you could be at zero at times t plus tau is if you were already at zero, uh, p zero of t, and you didn't move. One minus lambda tau. I haven't left myself enough space. One minus lambda tau plus little o of tau, p zero of t. It's the, uh, the only way we could be at zero is if we'd been there and not stayed. So again, we can take a p over t over to the other side. We can divide through by tau. We can send tau to zero. And if we do all that, we'll get a p zero prime of t equals minus lambda p zero of t. I've done a few steps at once there, but you can check through them if you want to make sure I didn't cheat. And of course, p0 of 0 is 1, because we definitely start from 0 at time 0. So we've written down a whole bunch of equations there. And just in case you've lost track, what we wrote down was we wrote down uh, p prime 0 of t equals minus lambda p0 of t. We wrote down p prime j of t equals minus lambda pj of t plus lambda pj minus 1 of t. We wrote down p0 of 0 equals 1. We wrote down pj of 0 equals 0. And all the things on that second line were for j greater than or equal to 1. So those are the equations we wrote down, with this bottom left one being the main one, but also those others. And these have a name. These are called the Kolmogorov forward equations. Because the idea is we got them from looking forward from a time t to a time t plus tau. So they're known as the forward equations or Kolmogorov forward equations. Okay, so if we go back to what we said at the beginning of this subsection, we said we wanted to show that pj of t was this expression, e to the minus lambda t, lambda t to the j over j factorial. So we'd like to show that that is satisfied by these equations, right? So let, let's do that. For the top line, for, for j equals 0, 
we claim that this is solved by uh, p0 of t equals uh, e to the uh, minus lambda t lambda t to the 0 over z 0 factorial, which is just e to the minus lambda t. Well, is that true? Well, it's certainly true that p0 of 0 uh, equals 1, isn't it? Because p0 of 0 is e to the minus 0 equals 1. So we can say a big tick for that one there. What about the differential equation on the left? Well, p prime 0 of t is what do we get if we differentiate that? We get minus lambda e to the minus lambda t, which is minus lambda of what we started with, which is indeed what we were wanting to show. That's that equation. Tick. Differentiating it is like multiplying by minus lambda. OK, what about j greater than or equal to 1? So again, the claim is pj of t equals e to the minus lambda t, lambda t to the j over j factorial. Let us note that pj of 0 is indeed 0 for j greater than 1, because on the top we have a 0 to the something positive. So that one is satisfied. So it's just this one we're left over with. So let's look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side of that separately. The left-hand side is p prime j of t. Remember, the prime means differentiate with respect to t. Uh, so, well, let's take the 1 over j factorial outside, because that's got nothing to do with t. And then we've got a product here, haven't we? We've got an e to the minus lambda t and a lambda t to the j. So uh, dealing with the product, uh, first we can differentiate the first and keep the second, or we can differentiate the second uh, to get j lambda t to j minus 1, and leave the first e to the minus lambda t. Um, let's try and tidy that up a bit, shall we? The first term is minus lambda e to the minus lambda t lambda t to the j over j factorial. Second term is, well, we've got a j on the top, haven't we, and a j factorial on the bottom. So that cancels out the j in the j factorial and leaves us a j minus 1 factorial. So that was that j there with that j factorial there, leaving us j minus 1 factorial. Uh, we've got a lambda t to the j minus 1, and we've got an e to the minus lambda t. Ah, but we can recognise some terms here, right? That term there is exactly what we started with. So that's minus lambda pj of t. And that term there, I've lost myself a lambda somewhere. Ah, yes, when I differentiated, uh, I made a mistake here, when I differentiated lambda t to the j, I got j lambda t to the j minus 1, but I should, of course, also have had a lambda in there, because it's lambda t to the j minus 1, so I needed to differentiate lambda t to get a lambda, so I was missing a lambda just there. Uh, and so what I have there is I have a lambda... And then all this, e to the minus lambda t, lambda t to the j minus 1 over j minus 1 factorial, that's all p j minus 1 of t. Which is a, precisely what we were trying to prove. right? That's precisely this statement up here. So we've proved that the Poisson probability does in fact solve the Kolmogorov forward equations. So what we've shown is that the infinitesimals definition does indeed give us a Poisson process.